Hello everyone. You probably remember the popular children's animated series The Land Before Time, about a group of little dinosaur friends looking for the Great Valley after a major earthquake. In ancient times, natural disasters happened much more often than today, and at some points they put an end to the whole race of giant reptiles. This happened 66 million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period. It was then that dinosaurs, as well as sea reptiles and flying lizards, completely disappeared from the face of the Earth. But do you know what happened after they went extinct? If not, you've found the right place. Today, we'll be looking into that. Let's get it on. In fact, the exact cause of this catastrophe is still the subject of heated debates between scientists. According to the most common theory, the mass extinction of dinosaurs was triggered by the fall of a huge asteroid or comet somewhere near the Mexican peninsula of Yucatan. What led scientists to this conclusion, though? The estimated date of extinction of dinosaurs and other living species coincides with the period of formation of the huge crater Chicxulub in the area of modern Mexico. Geologists believe it appeared after the fall of a celestial body about 10 or 15 kilometers in diameter. According to scientists, the impact was like an explosion of 100 teratons of TNT. For comparison, the world's largest thermonuclear device had 2 million times less power. In addition, the fall of the meteorite also triggered a tsunami with waves up to 100 meters high. It's easy to imagine that the degree of damage from such an impact was absolutely colossal. But what happened then? Well, first of all, not only was it a powerful tsunami on the surface of the Earth that swept away everything in its path, but there was also a huge high temperature shock wave. This in turn caused major fires all over the world, which led to the release of large amounts of carbon monoxide oxide and soot into the atmosphere. All these substances are not only harmful for living organisms, but are also able to cover the surface of the planet with a dense dust cloud for several years. So, after the fall of the asteroid, the whole Earth was in conditions similar to those of a so-called nuclear winter, without light and without oxygen. By the way, a couple of years ago, it was proved that the location of the asteroid's fall had a strong impact on the extent of the damage. The problem is that it landed in a very unfortunate fortunate place with a lot of hydrocarbons. That's why there was so much soot in the air. Perhaps had it struck in another region of the Earth, the dinosaurs would have lived for a couple of million more years, and evolution would have taken a completely different path. However, the asteroid version about dinosaurs' extinction is not the only one, albeit the most popular one. Among other theories are major magma releases from volcanoes, extermination caused by new predatory mammals, a sharp change in the Earth's magnetic field, and much much, much more. But the latest research by British scientists at Reading University says that although the asteroid had something to do with the extinction of the dinosaurs, it wasn't the most important factor. According to the authors, by the time it fell to Earth, the dinosaurs were already on the way to extinction due to the split of supercontinents climate change, and rivalry with other animals. Anyway, scientists will probably keep on debating about these theories, but that's not what we want to talk about today. In fact, we're interested in what was happening on Earth right after the dinosaurs disappeared. Thanks to the recent discovery of American archaeologists Tyler Lyson and Ian Miller, it has become much easier to reconstruct the ancient chronology. <laughs> In 2014, when the scientists first visited Corral Bluffs, a fossil site near Colorado Springs, they were not impressed. After finding absolutely nothing new there, the researchers decided to come back a few months later. That's when they made a historical discovery. Miller and Lyson found that this place has a unique sequence of remains of different animals and plants, which lived on Earth during the first million years after the death of the dinosaurs. The only thing is that instead of searching for the skeletons themselves, scientists had to pay more attention to the so-called concretions. These are clusters of rocks that formed around organic materials, including bones. When Lyson and Miller turned their attention to these geological formations, everything started coming along. 
scientists found entire skulls, and in some cases, the skeletons of mammals, and right next to them, fossilized plants. Researchers have excavated about 7,000 fossils, which lined up in chronological sequence. A great role in this was played by the ash layers from nearby volcanoes found by the scientists. The fact is that volcanic ash contains radioactive minerals, which store information about the changes in the magnetic fields of the Earth just like a flash drive. Thus, the discovery became something like a natural clock for scientists. They told geologists about the rapid changes that have occurred in the ecosystem since the fall of the asteroid 66 million years ago. As one might expect, the first million years after the asteroid, the planet was recovering from the catastrophe it had to endure. Not surprisingly, since about 75% of all fauna and 50% of all flora died, but they recovered surprisingly quickly. Yes, at first, there were quite primitive plants and animals on the planet. Nevertheless, soon the flora began to become more and more diversified, while tiny mammals began to slowly increase in size following the development of plants. Here's an example of how mammal populations changed dramatically and rapidly at the time. It's known that only small animals weighing no more than half a kilogram survived the fall of the asteroid and the catastrophe that followed. But the fossils found by Miller and Lyson made it possible to establish that a hundred thousand years later, mammals the size of a raccoon began to appear on Earth. That's about five or six kilograms of weight, and ferns were replaced by palm trees. By the end of the next 200,000 years, known as the so-called palm period, walnut trees began to appear on Earth. At the same time, mammalian diversity on the planet increased threefold. There were now species with a nut-based diet. Some of the animals that emerged at that time already weighed up to 25 kilograms. 700 years after the Great Extinction, there were already leguminous plants rich in protein on Earth. This in turn influenced the development of fauna. Mammals weighing up to 50 kilograms were now exploring the planet. Let us remind you that this is a hundred times more than the weight of the largest animal that survived the fall of the asteroid. One of the most remarkable examples of such animals was the Androsarchus, a predatory animal that looks like a wolf or a bear, with hooves instead of claws. But what happened to the climate? Thanks to the many fossils found, scientists have been able to trace this. They've divided the changes after the catastrophe into into three climatic periods, which coincide with the changes in flora and fauna described above. According to scientists, in each of these periods, the temperature of the atmosphere increased by 5 degrees Celsius. The higher it rose, the more developed and diverse the plants and animals inhabiting the planet became. But why is this research important? Well, first of all, it proves that the dinosaur's extinction was indeed primarily caused by the fall of a certain celestial body, and reconstructs in detail the chronology of the world's rebirth after this catastrophe. Oh, gorgeous. Though we should take into account that these finds concern a certain geographical area and don't give an exhaustive account of all development on all the planet. Second, scientists have concluded that the extinction of huge animals, especially dinosaurs, ultimately had a positive impact on biodiversity. If it hadn't been for the asteroid disaster, perhaps our planet would never have been home to so many different mammals. After all, just a hundred thousand years after the asteroid, the number of plants and animals on the Earth was the same as before. 300,000 years later, the planet was more diverse than before the catastrophe, and 700,000 years later, completely new species of animals appeared. However, it is important to clarify that we're talking about diversity. As for their size, after the fall of the asteroid, it took mammals 10 million years to finally reach the size of modern bison or antelopes. And finally, this research is an important message to us, modern people. For a geologist, a million years is not such a long time, but for ordinary people, it's an eternity. This should be taken into account when talking about the environment and climate change. It is true that nature has amazing abilities for self-regeneration, but these processes take hundreds of thousands of years and cost the destruction of millions of different species. So maybe it is better to try to avoid a similar catastrophe. It is known that the Earth has survived five mass extinctions in its history. According to many scientists, the sixth has 
has already begun, and it's happening right now, before our eyes. A few years ago, an international group of biologists even managed to prove this fact. And as you might have guessed, this extinction has nothing to do with unusual natural phenomena, as it happened before, but due to human activity. Here's a good illustration. Before modern humans appeared on Earth, about two species of mammals disappeared every hundred years. In the 20th century, when industry and polluting industries began to grow, the number increased 114 times. Scientists say that the rate of animal extinction over the past 200 years is rapidly approaching the rate at which dinosaurs, marine reptiles, and pterosaurs disappeared 66 million years ago. So, in a sense, human activity is not much better for the planet than the impact of a huge meteorite. So what can we do then? Although about a quarter of all mammals are at risk of extinction today, there is still time to try to prevent this. If everyone were to make even a small contribution to saving nature, much would change on the planet. Recycling, not using plastic bags, and cleaning up after yourself in public places are just a few ways to make a difference. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great. 